Let me show you a quick example of what systemic and generational racism looks like in the United States. Couple issues with your video, my man. You talked about this obviously racist law from 1866. Just want to point out that that was written, passed, and signed exclusively by Democrats. First of all, yes, we know the Democrats were the conservative party back then, and it's a conservative party today still denying black and brown people equal justice under the law. Hence why it's the conservative party today that unanimously opposes voting rights restoration. But please, Continue. You talked about how Texas mail-in ballots are rejected most often for voters of color, and you blame that on systemic and generational racism. But here's the issue. This is the actual mail-in ballot from the last election. Do you see anywhere on this ballot where you'd indicate your race? Here is the actual Texas voter registration form. Do you see any spot on here where you'd indicate your race? So if it's not on the ballot, it's not on the registration form, how are they able to discriminate based on race? I mean, I know I don't have an answer for that. Let's address this by starting with an important part of my video that you left out. White supremacy isn't just a terrorist wearing a hood burning a cross. It's much more sinister and covert than that. And that's why it's so much more dangerous. So what does that covert white supremacy look like? One, it's closing hundreds of polling locations, making it harder for black and brown people to vote because you close those polling locations in black and brown neighborhoods. In fact, the studies show that of the 50 counties that gained the most black and Latino voters, they closed 542 polling sites compared to just 34 closures in the 50 counties that gained the fewest black and Latino voters. Worse, those 542 closures of polling locations were in a place where 2.5 million more people moved to, mostly black and brown people. Two, it's setting up language barriers for people who don't speak English. So if you're one of the other 11 languages spoken in Texas and you don't have access to a ballot because it's not in your language, you're going to mess up and your ballot will be rejected more often. Hence why it's no accident that Asian voters were most disproportionately affected by the new requirements in the Texas voting laws. Three, it's making voting more difficult for people with disabilities, which disproportionately impacts black and brown people because we have lower rates of healthcare access than white people. And that's why this comment of yours. So if it's not on the ballot, it's not on the registration form, how are they able to discriminate based on race? Isn't the mic drop you think it is? Because you don't actually need to know the race of the people voting on election day. You just need to set up a systemically racist policy that denies them easy and fair and equal access to the ballot box in the first place. And that's exactly what Texas has done. So to recap, Texas closed hundreds of polling locations in black and brown communities. Texas denied language access to non-English speakers. And Texas made it more difficult for people with disabilities to vote, which disproportionately impacts black and brown people. All of that is systemic. All of that is advancing white supremacy. All of that is covert. And all of that went completely over your head until I explained it to you. I mean, I know I don't have an answer for that. Well, now you know. Class dismissed.